Hello, and welcome to another episode of Talking Money with Nozi, your go-to podcast for navigating the ins and outs of personal finance. I'm your host, Nozi, and today we're diving into the second question that was sent in by Mbumi. Let's have a listen. Hi, Nozi. Thanks for the educational platform that you've provided here. It's been a great source of education and information for me. I'd like to ask regarding contributing towards a tax-free savings account versus contributing towards a retirement annuity. So I recently met with a financial advisor who had advised that I'd be better off contributing the money that I'm putting into my tax-free savings into a retirement annuity instead. With his logic being that every single year you would get a tax uh, refund and therefore you could reinvest those funds and once all is said and done you should have a higher net worth but i've been considering whether it's worth taking the tax hit for the higher net worth or would you be better off um, not having any tax at all i haven't been able to find any information that really brings me to a conclusion so i wanted to find out what are your thoughts on this and i don't know have you ever seen the difference between the two thank you The advice from Bumi's financial advisor really raised my eyebrows and it made me think that it's a great opportunity to explore why having both a retirement annuity and a tax-free savings account can be advantageous. Let's start with the basics. I will talk about retirement annuities or RAs for short. First, RAs are long-term investment vehicles that are designed to help you put away money for your retirement. They are very helpful, especially for people that are self-employed and people that do not have employer pension funds. RAs come with some significant benefits in the form of, number one, tax deductions. Contributions to RAs are tax deductible up to 27.5% of your taxable income or 350,000 rand per year, whichever is lower. Number two. The investment growth within an RA is not subject to income tax, capital gains tax, or dividend tax while the funds remain inside the RA. Number three, RAs have compulsory preservation. This means that you cannot access your money whenever you want. This can be both an advantage and a disadvantage. On the plus side, it ensures that your retirement savings are preserved until you reach the age of 55. However, it also means you cannot access these funds before then without significant penalties. Number four, Regulation 28 compliance. RAs are bound by Regulation 28, which limits the extent of your exposure to certain asset classes. For example, you can only invest a maximum of 45% in offshore assets and you cannot invest 100% of your money in any one type of asset class. This is designed to protect investors from excessive risk, but this can limit your investment choices and investment growth as well because historically equities, also called shares, give the best returns over the long term, but Regulation 28 limits your exposure to shares. Next, let's talk about tax-free savings accounts or TFSA for short. Tax-free savings accounts were introduced in 2015 to encourage South Africans to invest. Here are some key features of tax-free savings accounts. Any interest, dividends or capital gains earned inside a tax-free savings account are completely tax-free. You can contribute up to 36,000 Rand per financial year with a lifetime limit of 500,000 Rand. Unlike retirement annuities, tax-free savings accounts offer flexibility. You can withdraw your funds at any time without penalties, making it a great option if you want to retire before the age of 55, for example. Also, Tax-free savings accounts are not subject to Regulation 28. This means you can invest in a wider range of assets, including investing 100% of your money into offshore investments if you like. One important thing to note is that most employees already contribute to retirement funds through employer pension or provident funds. In such cases, having an additional RA may not be necessary. 
if you already have an employer pension or provident fund, it could actually be more cost effective to increase contributions through your employer rather than taking out an RA by yourself. So why did our listeners' financial advisor suggest that they should focus only on a retirement annuity and not on tax-free savings accounts? Well, there could be a few reasons. I'm not saying that this is the case with Mbumi's advisor, but financial advisors sometimes earn commissions on certain products, including RAs. This can create a potential conflict of interest where they want to steer you in a certain direction because they benefit financially. However, it's important to realize that both RAs and tax-free savings accounts have unique benefits and they can complement each other in your financial plan. Another critical point to remember is that the tax treatment of withdrawals is different. Withdrawals from RAs at retirement are taxable. The first 550,000 rand is tax-free, but amounts above that are going to be taxed according to the retirement lump sum tax tables, right? Withdrawals from a tax-free savings account are entirely tax-free, regardless of the amount. And this can provide significant tax savings over time. Let's break down why having both can be beneficial. By contributing to both an RA and a TFSA, you can maximize your tax benefits. You get tax relief on your RA contributions and you enjoy tax-free withdrawals within your tax-free savings account. Tax-free savings accounts allow you to invest in a broader range of products, including equities, bonds, ETFs, providing greater choice and greater flexibility. The compulsory preservation of RAs makes sure that you have a dedicated pot of money for your retirement, while tax-free savings accounts give you the freedom for other goals without locking in your money until you are 55 years old. So to sum it up, it is not about choosing one over the other. It is about taking advantage of the strengths of both an RA and a tax-free savings account to build a solid and flexible financial plan. Always remember that financial advice should be tailored to your unique circumstances and goals. If you feel unsure about the advice you're receiving, don't hesitate to look for a second opinion. It is very important to speak to independent advisors who don't earn commissions from the products that they are selling. You should make sure that the advice you receive is truly in your best interest and not in the interest of the financial advisor. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Talking Money with Nozi podcast. I hope you found this discussion helpful. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like us to cover in future episodes, please reach out on my social media channels or send a voice note via WhatsApp to 072-586-2827. Please note that the information shared here is not financial advice. Always consult with a certified independent financial advisor before making any major financial decisions. Until next time, stay financially savvy.